preach today from the subject, when God stands up. When God stands up. When God stands. Bless us now, Lord, in Jesus' name. May we do no damage to your word, but preach that which become sound doctrine and gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. When God stands up. The declaration of Psalms 82 is that all power, real and imagined, are subject to the God of the Bible. All powers, real and and imagined are subject to the God of the Bible. Also, the thought that we want you to walk away with is that the God of the Bible is the judge of judges. In courts of human justice established when he instituted human governments. The God of the Bible, he is the ultimate judge. He is the judge of judges in courts of human justice. In fact, the political system, the judicial system, the court systems, these things were established by God and, and endorsed in Scripture. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 13. It says, and this is good for those who have problems with being a good citizen. Let every soul be subject to the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The Lord put magistrates, judges, these things in place to govern society. Without the, ju the judicial system, without the punitive systems, without our courts, without uh, the police. Without these systems, society literally could not function. We would live in a world where we would live by the law of the jungle, where only the strong survive. So consequently, no one would live very long, for no one is the strongest forever. You may be on top today, but sooner or later, someone will come along and topple you off of that, your porch. Thank God for a country that has uh, afforded to its citizens the Bill of Rights. We have certain inalienable rights as citizens of this country and as human beings. And these things protect us. And they were all ordained by God. The Bible says, for there is no power but of God. The powers that are, are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, the person who fights the power, who goes against the system, the individual who decides that they will live a life of crime and lawlessness. When you resist the power, the Bible says, you resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Going to get locked up or shot or killed. You follow me? 
It says this, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. The evil are a terror. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? It says this, do that which is good. And you won't have to fear the power, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is, speaking of the law enforcement officer, the minister of God to thee, and they're put in place for our benefit. You see that? For good. But if thou do that which is evil, he says, be afraid. If you a break in the law, if you are a drug dealer, if you are a um, practicing malfeasance of any kind, he says, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword, he carries not his sidearm in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath Upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but for conscience sake. Don't do right just to get, stay out of trouble, but do right because it's right to do. For this cause, for this reason, pay ye tribute also, pay your taxes. For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Isn't that amazing? The Lord, the God of the Bible, is the God of judges in courts of human justice, established when he instituted human government. We might shout before I'm done. Most reference, references to the posture of the God of the Bible is that we find God sitting. Everybody's familiar with the famous Isaiah 6 and 1 in the year King Uzziah died. I also saw the Lord high uh, sitting in his temple or sitting on the throne and he was high and lifted up. But in our text, we do not see God sitting. We see God standing. We see the Lord standing. And notice what it says. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Psalms 82 is a cosmic view of God. It's a spiritual view of God. It shows the God of the Bible reigning over the entire court system of the world and not only the courts but over all uh, you, you will see this in positions of power see we live in a day of gods small g-o-d's I'll talk to you more about that in just a minute a, de a day of icons where people Worship people. Amen. Whether they are sports icons, entertainment icons, movie icons, you name it, icons. And these people, if the icon, the iconic person wears something, then all of a sudden everybody shifts and they dress like that person. Person decides that they're not going to wear sleeves. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. They're going sleeveless. All of a sudden, you notice, people begin to go sleeveless. The women don't wear sleeves. And then they find, as they say, it's hard to go to the store and find a dress now with sleeves. Then once that iconic person is no longer iconic, Guess what happened? They start putting sleeves back on dresses. And all of a sudden, now I look at you, and I don't see all of your arms no more. And some people, 
I've said this, and people get mad with me. I don't say it as a criticism. I say it as a protection. Just because you can get anything, it doesn't mean that it fits you. That's for anybody, male or female. Just because they're making your size. And by the way, I'm not preaching against sleeves or no sleeves. That's not my point. My point is the influence of icons. And what I, what I count on, I count on the audience to be able to listen to what is said in context. If somebody walk away today and say, Preacher, he made me feel uncomfortable because I didn't have on sleeves. I, I'm not talking about sleeves. I'm talking about icons. I'm talking about the influence of people. And I depend on you to hear me with a level of intelligence. So if someone sitting beside you say, look at you and say, where are your sleeves? You look back at them and say, you're not listening. Because he's not talking about sleeves. He's talking about influence. Powerful people. I'm actually talking about Elohims. Gods in the earth. And how the God of gods rules and super rules. So we see this cosmic view of God. Also, I might add that judges normally sit to hear cases before rendering their judgment. Exodus 18 and 14 says, and when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, what is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone? And all the people standeth by thee from morning even to evening. Moses would sit there and hear case after case, complaint after complaint of the people. And thank God for his uh, father-in-law. He told him, man, this thing is not good. Give some of this responsibility to someone else. But he would sit and hear, and they would stand and present their case. Also in uh, Judges 4 and verse 5, for another support passage, we find Deborah. It says, and she dwelleth under the palm tree of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. She dwelt, literally, she sat there under what was called the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel, and she heard the cases. Isaiah 28 and 6 says, For the spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment, and for strength to them that turneth, that turn the battle to the gates. So the judge's normal posture was to sit. And God's normal posture, when the reference is that he's sitting. But in our text, he's standing. Our text will show that God is the lawgiver. We can get we get our three branches of government, actually, from the governing description of the God of the Bible. Isaiah 33 and verse 32 says, For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, and the Lord is our king. He will save us. That is, the Lord is our judge. This is where we get our judicial branch. The Lord is our lawgiver. This gives us our legislative branch. And the Lord is our king. That gives us our executive branch. The three branches of government. Right there based on Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 32. Praise God. I thank God for the system, the three branches of government that we have. And those branches were put in place to a large degree to be adversarial. 
so that they no one branch could to, could get out of control and become tyrannical. Yet in our God, in one, we have a judge, a lawgiver, and a king. The Lord is not sitting at the bench, patiently listening to the presentations of the cases because God is the judge and jury. And he needs nobody to tell him the facts of the case. He already knows. Hallelujah. He knows what people are doing on earth and he will execute judgment. Did you hear that? God knows what we do. I can't get an amen on that. Amen. Psalms 11 uh, verse 4 through 7 says, For the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try. The children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, God's soul hateth. Upon the wicked shall he rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance do behold the upright. God sees and God knows. He knows what every one of us are doing. He knows what we do. And he's going to reward every one of us according to our works. Ultimately in the great judgment and then here on this earth. Here on this earth, things happen to folk who are doing right. Amen. And, and, and if you're doing wrong, the Bible says, be sure that your sins will find you out. Amen. Amen. See, uh, the pastor may not know. And some of us are experts at hiding it from the public. But the Bible says this about the God of the Bible. The Bible says, day and night are alike to thee. God can see just as good in the day as he can in the night. Walls do not hide us from him. Curtains do not block his view. He sees all and a record is kept and a rendering is given. That's the kind of God that we serve. Say, well, my mama don't know, but your mother is not God. My father is not aware of what I'm doing, but your father is not God. Amen. Some of you, you're too loose with what you post. I don't know what this spirit of voyeurism is. I don't know why people feel uh, the need to uh, display themselves in less flattering uh, ways for the world to see. Hallelujah. Some of you, when you had the devil in you, you must have really had him in you because you put stuff out there that they can't take down. And you know, folk can find it now. Praise the Lord. Right when you think it's hid. Amen. They, there it is. Oops. Amen. I just, I just put something out there to help somebody. The Bible says that God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. The congregation of the mighty is the great assembly of gods. And the word God here, notice uh, verse 1 says, the congregation of the mighty, um, and he judgeth among the gods. God's small G O D. It says, God, capital G O D, standeth in the congregation among of, of the mighty, and he judgeth among the gods, small G O D. God, gods. What's interesting is 
In the Hebrew text, the word that's used to describe the God of the Bible, God here whom we serve, is the word Elohim. The word that is used to describe these lesser gods or false gods or magistrates or icons, fallen evil spirits or human beings is the word Elohim. It's the same word. Are you following me? I said we're going to shout after a while. No, I didn't. I said we might. <laughs> Elohim. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Look at, see what the writer is seeing. He sees the creator of all standing in a con amongst the power brokers of this world. The, the mighty, the billionaires, the king makers, the Rothschilds. You don't hear me. The Illuminatis. All of the icons, the presidents, the elected officials of might. No dog catchers in this. Judges, Supreme Court judges, district judges, circuit judges, judges of every kind. Praise the Lord. These gods, small G-O-Ds, are number one, human judges. You need to see this great mass of people. Secondly, the principalities and powers of other nations that oppressed Israel, they too are in this crowd. When you talk about principalities and powers, you talk about, you're talking about spiritual wicked kingdoms that have specific assignments. Have you noticed that cities seem to have personalities? Parts of town seem to have different parts of personalities. There are some cities that are known for their violence. There's a principality uh, erected over certain cities. Look at the death in Chicago. Look at how lives are taken, even in some of the local areas, within the triangle. I won't call any names since we're this close. Certain spirits have been assigned there. And they will have a drive-by or a shooting almost every morning. Somebody's dead. That's a demonic principality. Certain sides of town, oh, red light districts, there are things that go on there. And it's normal fare. These are principalities and powers. They control the wickedness of society. These gods are also pagan deities who rule the darkness of these of the world pagan gods false gods i'm on record everybody who knows me know i believe this and i shall continue to believe it i believe that there's only one true god and that one true god is the god of the bible so that also means that i believe that the god of all other books are false. Well, what about this religion or that religion? All of the books. I, I, can't, I can't be clearer. I, we don't have, I don't want to be misunderstood. All other books. What about the Quran? What about the Book of Mormon? What about, didn't I say all? All other books are false. And, uh, if you're going to see the God of the Bible in peace, you will have to have the same belief. For he said, I am the Lord thy God. And there is no other God 
besides me. He said in Isaiah, before me there were no gods formed. He said, I am the first and I am the last. But there are many, even though he's the only true God, there are many Elohims. And Elohim is the only Hebrew word in the Bible ascribed to God that is also ascribed to certain human beings. I'll explain that in just a minute. See, no human being is called Jehovah. No human being is called Yahweh. No human being is ascribed to Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tiskanu, Jehovah Shalom. These aren't given to human beings. But Elohim, Elohim is different. And to the recipients of the letter, of the psalm, what it was written at the time, that was absolutely no confusion at all because the reason that the judges in the court were called Elohims is because the judges in the courts were the representatives or the voice for God. They were in God's stead. They were his representatives to carry out his work. So they operated on his behalf. So their office was the office of God. That is the office of the Elohim. Right. So the people clearly understood when the Elohims came and they rendered judgment, these were men of God. They were powerful men uh, in the place of God. I want to help you with it. See, even uh, the, God said this about Moses in Exodus chapter 7 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. I have made thee Elohim to Pharaoh. And Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. That is because you represent me. You're in my place. You say it all the time. When the preacher is preaching, he's, he's preaching the word of God. And many of you, while the word is going forth, you say, speak, Lord. Or you say, that's God right there. Even though I'm standing here, but I'm speaking for God. Are you with me today? These Elohims, the word is used Generally to mean strength, might, referring to powerful men, influential persons are Elohims. We see the iconic persons today in society. And they have, isn't it amazing, the influence that Cardi B had on our young folk versus the influence of the preacher. Isn't it amazing the influence that Snoop Dogg has opposed to the influence of the senator. Athletes can get drunk, can act a fool, they can get all tatted up, put earrings everywhere they can go, and come to town and have a youth camp and draw more kids than the Sunday school teacher will ever be able to draw. That is the power of an Elohim. There are Elohims in media. Oh my, that's where you really find them. They, when they get ready, they know how to start a race war. When they get ready, they know how to pit this group against that group. If they want you to be painted as a racist, you may as well uh, put race, uh, put a, a sign on 
that says I am a racist because they have such influence that people will believe a lie. They can know that it's a lie. But if it's repeated enough times, they'll say, you know what? Well, that is true. I'll never forget, you know, my dealings with the media uh, long before the phrase fake news was, was coined. I learned a long time ago that they're not to be trusted. When we were doing the uh, Keep Christ in Christmas campaign, not one media person, not even those who were friendly to our cause, they refused to say ever what we actually said. What we said was, uh, let us patronize those businesses that include Merry Christmas in their Christmas greetings. The media, even the friendly media, repeatedly said, there's a church in town that, that's telling people not to shop at a store unless they say Merry Christmas. And even when you would correct them, they still would not move off of their narrative. The point is, they know how to make you angry. In, in 2014, as illegals were coming into our country, the drug cartels told the illegals, Americans are good-hearted people. They give us more credit than we deserve. Uh, and they said, and Americans have a soft spot for children. Bring children with you when you cross into the country. Now, they don't have to be yours. Kidnap them. Go down to Mexico City, go, go down to the border, and kidnappings are very high. People scared to let their children go outside because they may not come back in because somebody on their way to the border will nab the child. So they showed up with children, and our 40 Fourth president of the United States of America, President Barack Obama, understood that when the children showed up with these parents, you cannot take children uh, with whom paternity have not been established. Because these people show up and say, this is my child. They don't show up with papers. There's no data bank. There's no phone call. There is nothing that proves that this child is the child of that parent. So what do you do? You do the only humane thing you can do. You can't put the child in the holding cell where you put grown people. Because the child is going to be abused. It's going to be raped. It's going to be killed. You know what you do? You separate them. You build uh, a holding area where the children can be fed three square meals a day, uh, be hydrated, because they were dehydrated coming through the uh, desert, uh, eat, the children gain weight while they were in the cells. Let them play soccer. Get some game ball, let them play games until we can establish whether or not these people are the parents of this child. I'm preaching to you. And it was a grand idea, and nobody had a problem with it until President Trump continued the same practice. And then all of a sudden, we were separating children from their parents. And what a mean country we are. And what a mean president we have. And, that, and, I'm, and I'm not even talking about the president as much as I'm showing you what these Elohims do. So all of a sudden now, everybody's in an uproar. People are mad because we're separating children from their parents. When, when we did it in 2014, it was humane. The big, big uproar about the Betsy Ross flag since that great historian Colin Kaepernick said that it represented slavery. The same Betsy Ross flag 
was proudly displayed at President Obama's second inauguration. Nobody had a problem with it. Same flag. Uh, same Betsy Ross. Same history. Same, 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 same. But when the media decided the icon, these Elohims that we want to make uh, a stink about this, all of a sudden now it's racist. And it would be racist to display the Betsy Ross flag until these Elohims decide it's all right again. And what people do in the middle, the great unwashed, the great easily influenced, you'd fall right into their pit. Betsy Ross was an abolitionist. She was against slavery. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and now all of a sudden, the, the flag that she made was, is now a symbol of racism. I won't, I'm, why am I preaching to this? Preaching to you about these things. You need to know how these gods, these Elohims, are trying to manipulate your mind, manipulate your thinking. And they, listen, they will come up with a crisis every other hour. Not that they care for you. Not that they care for your plight. Not that they care whether you live or die. They have their own agenda. But they are powerful. Preach wouldn't. The agenda of all of the Elohims now. You see it in every other movie. You see it on every other commercial. You see it everywhere. They're just shoving, jamming, abominable behavior down our throats. They're everywhere. They're in media. They're in movies. They're everywhere. They report the news to you. They write the news. They, make, they write the scripts. And oh... And, and ain't nobody buying this stuff like black folk. We just, we just eat this stuff up. And, uh, and now we're, we're just, we're accepting of, of same sex this, same sex that. We're accepting a behavior that ought not to be. I remember, and I'm only 58, I just turned 58. And by the way, thank you to everybody for your kind <laughs> gifts, your cards, your kindness, your financial gifts, the, your kind words. Just you are so, you, thank you so much. You certainly bless me real good. But uh, I'm, I've just been here 58 years. And listen, that's not a long time. I feel good. So how you feel at 58? Uh, about like I felt at 25. But, but I'm not 25 though. Now, check this out. Check this out. Listen to me now. I remember when brothers. Let me rephrase it. I remember when men, unless you were Mr. Clean, men didn't wear earrings. Tom, it never crossed our minds to get our ears pierced. Look at these ears. Ain't, the only hole in these ears are the ones going in my head. And some argue whether or not there's a brain in there, but the, God put them there. It never crossed my mind. And I remember when just one or two athletes began to do. Then a few entertainers began to do it. And the next thing you know, it's a black thing. One person, one Elohim gets a tattoo. You know, I, I, was always, I always thought that the great master painter was God. And I like the color of caramel that he painted all over my body. Amen. And I like his mastery. He, he, can really, he can really paint, so I decided to leave it like God left it. Like God made it. And go on and do like they taught me to do in school. Write on paper. Somebody's going to get mad and walk out on me. Don't walk out. I'm, talk, I'm, I'm really not talking about tattoos. I'm talking about Elohims and how they will affect you. You can't let them.
just twist your thinking. And all of a sudden, it just takes one or two. One or two. Then after a while, oh, my Lord, here we come. There you go. You, you, uh, you can't even see. Your, your, your neck is gone. Your, your hands are gone. Oh, everywhere, praise the Lord, everywhere. Gone. All because you want it to be, you, want, you were being controlled by a small G-O-D. You were influenced by an Elohim. A iconic figure. A iconic figure in society talked you in to doing stuff like that. I was home the other day and I had on some shorts, pants, and I, uh, I didn't have, I had my phone in my pocket. Yes, sir. And the phone was kind of heavy, it down, and I felt, <laughs> I felt my pants kind of sliding down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I and I'm going to tell you right now, that just didn't feel right. I had to. And I wanted to know, how in the world does a man walk around in public with his pants down here? I mean, I, I, mean, I, I couldn't do it in my home. He was influenced by a wicked Elohim. That Elohim has caused you to make a fool of yourself. And you're a fool and you're not even ashamed. And everybody's got to pretend that you're not a fool. Everybody's got to pretend that they think that what you're doing is normal. Nobody says anything to you when everybody wants to say, hey man. Hey, hey, I got my wife and my children right here. Hey, we're in a, we're in a restaurant. Hey, we're at McDonald's. Hey, we, we didn't really think we were going to see anybody's draws when we stopped by to get gas to fill up our cars. One Elohim from South Central. One rapper. And all of a sudden, there we go. Well, I want to say this tonight, today, that uh, I'm preaching too long, but the God of the Bible stands in the midst of the congregation of the Elohims. Can I get a witness? Praise the Lord. He, he, he rules. Are you following me? In the case of our text, God is speaking, I'm going to preach, to the corrupt judges who were not dispensing justice as they are. Amen. Also, as I mentioned, Elohim could refer to pagan deities whose false worship was supplanted by the truth of the one true God. With these gods were powerful men with false deities. And I want you to know that I'm working on something. I'm going to get in trouble now. Kill my amen corner. I don't know why the Lord had me doing this. My attendance, y'all looking so good. The attendance is up. and It's up in, in July. It's good because vacation season. Thank you. I'm so glad to see you. Thank you. <laughs> then I have to go to say something. I'm like, come on, God. And he said, you better say it. <laughs> Who you want to come to church, them or me? Well, I want you, Lord. Because you know, we can't have church without the Lord. I want, I want the people to come, but Lord, no, I need Jesus to show up. If Jesus don't show up, nothing happens. See, we've got these yellow hymns. I'm working on something, see. See, we brought in, we brought in things that shouldn't be in church. I've already contacted some of the powers that be that I know. You know, I, I, I want to know when did holiness get into Greek life? <laughs> Elohim. And these fraternities and sororities in their doctrine 
Where is Jesus? Why is it required of Christ that one join something like that? The question I want to know is, is it right to be a part of something like that? Because if it's right to be a part of it, then it's wrong not to be. If it's right to be a part of a thing, it's wrong not to be. It's wrong not to belong to a church. You need a church home. You need a pastor. Jesus established the church. God says, I will give them pastors according to my own heart who will feed the flock with knowledge and understanding. I want to know to these churches that allow it, when men and women join these things, is there a ritual that they undergo? And if there is a ritual, then to whom is that ritual directed? Oh, I know next Sunday I won't see Harry. But, but you know what? I might be saving your soul. I might be telling you something that may help get rid of some of the confusion. That may help understand why spiritually you can't go but so high. Because when, when, cause see, we serve a God now. We serve a God who says no man can serve two masters. That's Bible. Jesus said that. So you either hate one and love the other, cling to one and let go of the other, but you cannot serve God and the world. So in your private ritual, was Jesus in the ritual? And uh, if they worked his name in there, then can you go to the Bible and show me in the Bible where Jesus said become a Chopper, copper, whopper. <laughs> or whatever it is you call yourself. Preach on, I'm preaching about Elohims. Yeah. You were with me when the Elohims were political. But I'm just asking, I'm just asking, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm throwing it out there. And, uh, and, and you know, in terms of nature, Christianity is a religion of light. When you come to Jesus, you come to the light. When you come to Jesus, you come to the light. When you come to Jesus, there are no, there are no esoteric sex, esoteric knowledge in Christ. Esoteric knowledge that only some can have and no one else can have. As a matter of fact, there were esoteric sects in the church and they were denounced because they were called Gnostics. And the Gnostics claimed to have certain knowledge. Am I right about it? And certain awareness that no one else had. And Jesus said, come out of all that. All these Elohim that have walked in and all of these Elohims have a God attached to them. Have rituals attached to them. Praise the Lord. Some of these things, some of these groups to join them, you got to, I can't join them. I can't join them because it's too late. I could have joined in uh, 76 because in 76 I was in darkness. But in 77, I saw the light. And in order to be a part of this group, I've got to confess that I'm a lost soldier in search of the light. And uh, I saw the light. Good God Almighty, Jesus laid his hands on me. The Lord saved me from my sins. 
But if I'm going to join the Freemason, I got to say I'm in search of the light. Well, now the question is, do I have the light? Or am I trying to find the light? Amen. And I read, I read, I read where the light is. Je Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Good God Almighty. So, so now you see when you really get into this thing. Oh, I feel your resistance. I feel you pushing back as you stream today. I feel you. I feel you, but you ought to hear me. Oh, these Elohims, they're everywhere. And uh, they're, they're gunning, they're gunning for your mind. The Bible said God standeth. I feel the preacher. In the congregation of the mighty, he judges among the gods. And he said to the judges, how long will you judge unjustly? Mm, in their courtrooms across America where there are different tiers of justice to the powerful, influential, informed, and well-connected. That's one form of justice. And to the poor man who is given a court-appointed attorney. Other words, somebody practicing. You're almost dead in the water. Oh, Lord. He said, how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? You know, the, it's talking about partiality. Sometimes justice is meted out not on what was done, but who did it. And justice, the ideal for justice, even in our age of relativity, is impartiality. All are held to be equal under the law. Likewise, the violation of the law should bring just punishment. According to this understanding, the law is held to be an absolute standard by which society is organized and community in the fallen world is made possible. Many scholars see no enduring moral or legal structure for society at all. They became fundamentalist, holding that the law is simply the majority of opinion of any given society at any given time. I don't go along with them because I believe that there is a religious basis especially to the law of our nation. And we serve a moral God. And there is a moral law. This is why when they passed a law that made same-sex marriage legal, I said they can make it legal, but they can't make it right. You can make abortion legal, but you can't make it right. You can pass the law and make it legal to get drunk, but it's not right to get drunk. And if we don't watch it, sooner or later they're gonna pass a law that makes pedophilia legal. I see it coming. They're passing laws to make that which God said wrong legal. And what they're going by is the society, the majority opinion of society. But I want you to know the church is not supposed to operate on the majority opinion of society. The church is supposed to operate on the word of God. And even when society changed, God's word has not changed. The Bible still says what it used to say. And the Bible still reads the way it used to read. And that's good news in the Bible. Because the God of the Bible, he is the Elohim. He is the God above all gods. Hallelujah, Jesus. And he charged the gods of the courtroom and the, judge, the gods of this world with an eightfold indictment. Number one, they judge unjustly. Number two, they accept the person of the wicked. 
Number three, they do not know God's law. The fourth indictment was that they didn't even wish to understand. Isn't it amazing the people that we're voting into office? What happened in South Bend, Indiana, that a man could be married to a man and still be, get voted into office? I don't care what you say. If a man marries a man, he'll never get my vote. He'll never get my nod. I don't want to hear any policy from him. I don't want to hear anything he has to say because you are messed up. You're messed up from the core. And look at it now. The man will get up, good God Almighty, and kiss his husband at the rally. And you got dumb folk out there who applaud wickedness. I saw something last night uh, that kind of tickled me. I was watching uh, a little bit of uh, Furious 7 right as I was getting ready for bed. And uh, you know, the Fast and Furious movies. So this was Fast and Furious 7. And they were in Dubai. And they were in a room having a party. And women were scantily cladded in the party and uh, with one of the scenes I guess the lady was showing more of her derriere than she should have been and so they blotted it out because it was around 9 o'clock or so I guess they blotted it out for television standards but that same television that same TV station will show a man kissing a man and they will show a woman kissing a woman they'll blot out the breasts because that's inappropriate for a child to see but they'll let a little child see two grown folk having a lip lock with each other if you stop and think about it, good God Almighty, a baby, from the time they were born, they knew what their mother's nipple looked like. It was more appropriate and more accepting for them to see the breasts of their mama than to see two men locking up with each other. It's a messed up world that we live in. These Elohims are trying to influence us and they're going the wrong way. They've abandoned the standards of God. They are dark. They don't know God's law. Number four, they don't wish to understand. Number five, they walk in darkness. Their civil institutions are all out of course. Trouble everywhere. But I heard him say, they're gonna die like men and they're gonna fall like princes. Well, thank you, Jesus. What am I saying? When God stands up, no matter how, the wicked try the reign. When the Lord stands up, God always has the last say. He knows when we've suffered long enough. He knows when you've gone through and you can't take it no more. I'm here to tell you that when the time is right, he's gonna stand up and when he stands, everything changes. When he stands, the devil has to flee. And I wanna tell you something. There's a word in the New Testament that is as strong as the Old Testament's word Elohim the New Testament word is Dunestis 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 in the New Testament and the word Dunestis in the New Testament is translated into the English the word is potentate and there were many potentates in this world a potentate is a man who is a possessor of power and authority. The potentates hold high office. The Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8 was a potentate. 
and the potentates of this world have gone crazy. But I heard the Bible say in 1 Timothy chapter 6, thank you Jesus, and verse 15, it says which in his times he will show who is the blessed and only potentate, king of kings and lord of lords, who only has immortality in the light, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach and no man can have seen or can see. What am I saying? Jesus is the only true potentate. Jesus is the only true icon. And the day will come when he's going to show the world that he is king of kings and lord of lords. And he told me to tell you that some of you have been under a heavy load but the Lord said tell them that I'm standing up on their behalf tell them I've been watching and I've been looking and I've seen the devil attack you I've seen the enemy come against you I've seen spiritual forces light up against you but the Lord is saying for somebody time is up and when the Lord stands up the devil has to run when the Lord stands up demons have to get back when the Lord when the Lord stands up everything changes Standing up right now, right now, standing for you and for you and for you and for me. He's standing, yes, sir. And the song is coming out again. Somebody say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clap your hands if you believe that he's standing on your behalf. Ah, he's standing up. Oh, Lord. Standing for my mother. Standing for my father. Standing up. Standing for my sisters. Standing for my brothers. The Lord. Ah, the Lord. He's standing for you and me. Give him praise if you believe that he's standing up. Oh, I want to say to the lawmakers, I want to say to the senators, to the congressmen, I want to say to all elected officials, I want to say to all in positions of power, the president and to everyone else, hallelujah, the icons of this world, the Elohims in media, hallelujah, the leaders in sports, praise the Lord. I want to say to all of you, you may have influence like small GODs, but the God of the Bible told me to tell you that you're going to die like men. You're going to fall one day. And when you leave here, when you leave here, you're going to stand before the Elohim of Elohims. You're going to stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you're going to have to give an account of the deeds done in your body. I'm glad today that I made the Elohim of Elohims my Lord and Savior. Are you glad today 
that you've been washed in the blood are you glad today that you're saved and sanctified and know who Jesus is if you're glad give him praises give him praises for setting your soul free for cleaning you up for bringing you out most preachers today we don't have the influence that the rapper has we don't have the influence that the movie star has I was somewhere not too long ago during her lifetime and uh, at a preacher's inaugural the inauguration of a bishop and Aretha Franklin walked in and you should have seen how the people ran to take a picture of Aretha. Oh, a music, I, 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 iconic musically. Amen. She did a few gospel albums, but she cut her teeth. She made her fortunes. She left the church in the R&B world. Rock steady. Wasn't about prayer. <laughs> Free will love wasn't on the way to church. You don't hear me. <laughs> An unmistakably beautiful voice and should have been welcomed in the place where she was. It's a public place. But to have everybody to run to her, to have saints gravitate like that was an embarrassment. It shows that these Elohims have way too much influence on us. Way too much. Way too much. Way too much. During his lifetime, the late Bishop Eddie Long, who was that singer that sat on the front row? Usher. Usher don't sing for Jesus. On the front row, choice seats. Treat you would have thought he was the bishop the bishop. That's too much. That's not right. That's, that's, that, that, that's the kind of stuff that confuses everything. That's what gets us all mixed up. And, and so, we, so when we do come together, there are too many influences. Somebody trying to be like this person. Somebody trying to be like that one. Somebody else want to bring quarter B into the church. Somebody else want to bring quarter A. So forth and so on. And we want to, and, and so to the point, to the point that we get influenced so till we've lost our identity and then you get confused with your purpose and then when a preacher stand up and preach like this you know what they call you judgmental got all of these uh, contrasting spirits when the Lord is saying uh-uh you better trust me because when the time is right I'm gonna stand up all you judges I see you Every day in the courtroom, I'm going to stand up. False gods, powerful people, powerful sports stars. Oh, we worship at the feet of these people. I saw one time where during Michael Jordan's tenure, somebody, some clown held up a sign saying, Jordan is God. Oh, yeah, you've seen it. If you, if you, if you, have, if you have way keep up with sports, you've seen it. Hey, Amen, you've seen it. It was at the game, and the man... All because he could put a ball in a basket. He's God. So that's too much. That's too much. That's too much. That's too much. Somebody famous, shake your hand. You say, ain't gonna never wash my hand again. That's too much. Person ain't even saved. That's too much. You know who wants to influence you? The Lord does. He wants his word to influence you. I wish, I wish... If we live in the world of my making, if I could have uh, housewives of Atlanta, all of them shows, oh, Lord, oh, they've just messed us up. Just messed us up. And you think you can ingest that stuff all day and watch it and not influence you. And see, so, so therefore, most women now struggle with being wives. I ain't never seen anything like it. Struggle with being a wife. Men struggle with being a husband. We pretend that we don't know the, the meaning of words. 
So what does submission really mean? What it has always really meant? What are you, a third grader? You know what it means. All of a sudden, because the world, Oprah redefined the way we think. She challenged our uh, standards. She challenged our landmarks. You know, the Bible said, remove not the ancient landmark. You know what she said? You know what she challenged? She said on her show, with, all, with everybody watching, and then people begin to ask the same question. Then preachers begin to ask the question, what is normal? You, you remember, if you don't have a mind, I do. What is normal? Can someone tell me what normal is? You know, everybody in the audience is scared to speak up. I wish I would have been there. Uh, Oprah, I can tell you. And, I, and I'll tell you this, the things that you're inferring, ma'am, are not normal. And the idea, you didn't even understand, it was a doctrine. I, t I said years ago, long before people who see it now saw it then, I said her show is not entertainment. It is a worship service. The God was secularism. Now she's got a female deity that she prays to. It, was, it, was, it wasn't entertainment. It's not just a black woman doing good. Maybe it started that way, but somewhere along the lines, a line was crossed. And it went into promoting religions and then began to bring Deepak Chopra and other gurus on. And they have us on her own station now. She got a spiritual thing on, on Sunday. And then, and the, and the Christian ministers, she do bring in a Christian ministers in name only. Well, what about Bishop, this one, that one? The main one I'm talking about. In name only. Because they've taken the gospel and tried to mix it. They, they don't preach the gospel. They preach psychology. Psychology with a Christian flair. So now they're teaching you how to tap into yourself. Show me in the Bible. Just show me one. I'll give, give you a grand right now. Show me one scripture where we're taught to tap into. I got, I got to tap into myself and tap into my spirit. No, no, they told me to do it. I'll tell you what, when I do best, I'm at my best when I deny myself. I'm at my worst when I tap into me. Because you know what? In me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. So I read what Jesus said, deny yourself. I never read why he told me to tap into myself because based on the way the Bible is written, that was the problem. All human beings were so tapped into themselves that Christ came. And she's not the only one, but that's, she, that's an easy icon for me to bring up so you'll see what I'm saying. These people have influenced us. They've, they've so influenced the church that they've pulled the church away from biblical Christianity. Most preachers now try to sound like motivational speakers, secular psychologists, and all that more than just preaching. Preaching the gospel. But I say to you, nothing will keep you like the gospel. Nothing, nothing. Nothing will keep you. Nothing will keep you like the gospel, and nothing will keep you but the gospel. Hallelujah. We're going to all stand one day before the judge of judges. The Elohim of Elohims. Oh, we will have to give an account. And I want to say to all of the powerful, all of the powerful, oh, the heads of all of these media corporations, all of the powerful, you know what? They all die. They all die. And when they're dead, the, the dead rich is just like the dead poor, shriveled up in a box if they're not cremated and can say or do nothing. Said, well, they left a hundred billion dollars. That's the point. They left it. You can't take it with you. Can't take it with you. Can't take it with you. And most of those people, when they have it, they don't enjoy it. Because there's no happiness, no joy apart from the Lord. I want to pray for someone today. But here's my prayer. This is different. I want to pray 
over you dealing with who and what, listen to me, influences you. See, because all of us are in this battle. We all battle with the spirit. Uh, the flesh wars against the spirit. Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. In this, everybody's gunning for your mind and your thinking. Young wife, young husband, newly married, stay in the scripture. Stay in the Lord. Young people who are dating, date holy. Do what God says. Both of us who you're single and live in your life, put the Lord first. Let Jesus be your influencer. I want, I want to warn all the brothers, don't fall trap to some of these uh, uh, people and these systems and these ways that are designed to draw you away from the God of the Bible. First thing some of these disciplines do, first thing they require is that you be angry. Number one, that you be angry. And number two, that you hate white people. Now you know they ain't God. You know they ain't God. You fall for that, you the fool. I don't want a religion that's devoid of joy. I love living. I love being saved. I love having joy on the inside. I love living my life where I don't look at anybody and resentment automatically rises up in me because of the color of their skin. Don't even know. There's something wrong with that. Oh my. Lord, I want to be influenced by the God of the Bible. Somebody's getting ready to go off to college. People are making decisions. Let God stand. Let him stand in your mind. Let him stand in your thoughts. Let him stand in your decision makings. Let him stand in what you do, and he'll lead you right. If you want this kind of prayer, you want to be a part of this, you want to be influenced by the Spirit of the Lord, come quickly to the altar, and I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Preacher, you're talking to me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Move quickly. Our time is about up. Praise the Lord. You're talking to me. You're talking to me. Some folk would rather have houses and land mm -hmm. some folk choose silver and gold along these things they treasure and forget Souls, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Mm -hmm. You know the road gets rough, and the going gets tough, and the hills hard to climb. It was alone There is no doubt In my mind I decide To make Jesus My joy One more time The road is rough
you are the only true potentate you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords we will not let any iconic figure any worldly potentate any entertainer media mogul, movie maker, sports star, any artist, any elected official, anyone, pull us away from you. We come against the devil. We come against his influence. Hallelujah. Oh God, guide our shekanobos decision making in the name of Jesus. Make our minds strong and our thinking strong in the name of Jesus. Gird up the loins of our mind. Gird up, gird us, Lord. That we not fall prey, that we not fall victim to the icons of this world. These evil influencers who are designed to pull us away from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. Oh God, protect our children. These Elohims, Lord, they have so much power. They control the media. They control social media. They control these companies. They censor what we see. They censor what we hear. Oh God, they are in powerful positions. They're in positions of influence. But God, your word is right. And you promise to keep us. And you promise, oh God, that you would strengthen us where we're weak and Build us where we're torn down and give us the power that we need to be and to do all that you would have us be and all that you would have us to do. In the name of Jesus, we make our vows to you 
and to you only. We make our rituals to you and to you only. We sell out to you and to you only. We submit to you and to you only. We submit to the Bible. We trust you, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. In the text, nobody had to ask God to stand up. For it opens in verse 1 saying the Lord standing. In verse 8 it closed by saying arise, O Lord. Well, Lord, arise. <laughs> Somebody better praise him because I see God changing everything. Somebody better praise him because I see God changing everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Gird up, O oh God, the loins of our minds. Our minds. On the altar, say, Lord, my mind. My mind, my mind. Gird up my mind. Make me strong minded. Not stubborn to the Holy Spirit. Not stubborn to the Christian way. But strong minded to serve you. Strong willed when it comes to what's right. Strong to do what is right. Strong to oppose what is wrong. Strong to care for the fatherless, for the needy. Oh God, stand on behalf of those who have no advocate in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Hold the applause for just a moment. Thus saith the Lord. You will notice. Don't fight it. Go along with it. You will notice me making your mind stronger. The Holy Spirit is working on the loins of your mind. The loins, the belt, the girdle that holds the thinking together. See, you're not going to lose your mind. They, 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 they made suicide popular now. Someone told me today they got apps out there that you can go to where they encourage things like that. That's for the weak-minded. We're too strong for that. We're too strong for that. We're too strong to dip and whim and go with the various changes and the various winds of society. We're anchored in the Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Now you can clap your hands. Hallelujah. Glory to God.